Welcome to the Infinite Star Connections. Yes, we are back. It is wonderful to be here. We are your host. I'm Viviane Chauvet and my friend Jeff Demers. We are thrilled uh, to be back on the, on the air. I know it took a little bit longer than usual. And today it's a very unique time at 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern time, especially now with daylight savings where we're now back in Pacific Daylight Time and Easter Daylight Time. So our wonderful guest is on the way, Rob Potter. He's very well known, research, material, the Venusian, working with the Pleiadians. He's also the director um, and the organizer of the wonderful summer Mount Shasta conference. So we're very happy to welcome you, Lucy. Thank you for being here, Mike. Aloha, everybody. You know, for those of you who may not know, Peter and I just came back from Maui when we did amazing healing work, meditation. Uh, we were working at the Stargate Retreat Week 2 with the amazing Pragit and Julian. So we're sending them healing energy right now. They're recovering uh, from uh, the trip and they had some food poisoning. Can you imagine flying and having food poisoning at the same time? It's like, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Very, very hard. But it's wonderful to be back. Nathalie, good to have you. Welcome. Bienvenue. Shazam. Night vibe with Natasha. I like that. Good to have you too. So welcome, Jude, as well. Yes, amazing time. Yesterday, we did our monthly event. And for those of you who have reached out to me personally, yes, because I was traveling to Maui for quite a while and doing amazing work there with the Lemurian energy, I rest assured that our monthly meditations on YouTube are coming back this month. In fact, I have three meditation planned for March only. So there will be plenty of meditation on YouTube. Just want to give you some reassurance. Stephanie, good to have you as well. How are you doing, my friend? How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm just uh, getting ready for this exciting week coming up and uh, can't wait for the springtime. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are preparing for springtime as well. Oh, we also have Bob, Denise, and Dooley, all three of you. So wonderful to join us. Thank you for being here. I just heard from our guest, Robert Potter, or Rob Potter, Ooh. as he's well known. He will be there just about 15 minutes. He's coming. He's just turning up some loose hands, technology-wise, all of it. But he will be here. He'll be back. In the there he is. There you are. Okay. Yes, he will be here in about 15 minutes. So just in the meantime, it's a time to connect with all of you. And I am still recovering. I am still settling in um, back to Arizona. So you have to think about that I spent more than 10 days in a tropical environment on the island of Maui with the energy of the Pacific Ocean uh, the elementals, the energy there, the moist, and then coming back into the desert of Arizona, it is quite an adjustment. I can feel my skin. I can feel the energy. So it's really interesting to bring this energy from uh, Maui. And the island consciousness itself granted us, Peter and I, really great gift. Uh, we were allowed to bring certain things from the island that usually it's not allowed, but the island wanted to thank us for our services there. And so really wonderful to um, to be back. Catherine, very much both. I have two Catherine. Catherine um, and Catherine from Canada. So thank you both for being here. Our guest, Rob Potter, is coming. He just sent me a message. He's just working on <laughs> working on coming in and yet crystal i missed you too dear and i will see you very soon so it's wonderful to be back here on the infinite star connections rob potter is coming so you will have a full time with them in the meantime just let's hold space with each other um you know just feel the energy of maui the energy energy of the ocean just for a moment imagine uh, the Lemurian ancient energy. Uh, it was incredible, Jeff, because we saw and worked with the Lemurian masters when we were there. They came. 
what what is the uh, Lemurian master? What does that mean? What is it? Just like a, what? It's it's the elders from Lemuria who've been working with us in the etheric field, working with us all to create a quantum energetic field on the island to connect all the, the mountaintops and the other island into an energetic grids. And that's what we did. We worked um, with the Lemurian elders, those who are ancient ones and working with us and also working with the group consciousness of the whales. No, don't refer to them as the ancient ones. That's well, right. they didn't mind when I said that to them and they yeah, said, no. yes. Probably the elder race would be better, but ancient ones are not, are not a good term to use. Well, it's let's agree to disagree to us. The energy behind that word is of a high elevation and frequency. So we've been using this term during the entire retreat, and the masters were very pleased with it. <laughs> Wonderful. So maybe for them it's fine, depending on the semantics of the words. Mm -hmm. I want to welcome Judy. Good to have you. Debbie, yes, it is good to see you as well. Good to all of you. And I know that many of you were at a retreat with us, whether on the live stream or in person. Uh, and it was quite an amazing. At some point, we saw a double rainbow, Jeff, right over the ocean. Right over the ocean. It was absolutely incredible. And it's just feel the energy. Yeah, Mike, yeah, I'm feeling the energy right now. So we saw a double rainbow over the ocean and a double rainbow over the mountain, this beautiful um, volcanic mountain there. And it was just spread out throughout the land. And it's almost like at some point a rainbow has two sides touching the land from one side to the other. It was absolutely incredible. So... Oh, I got another message here that our guest, Rob Potter, is getting ready to join. And so I will tell you, I'll tell him that we are so looking forward to seeing him. And of course, once Rob, our guest, comes, I'll make sure that I make the introduction. Um, and then we're going to dive into a beautiful conversation. Meanwhile, I want to say hello to Carolina. Javier, Javier, you said your name. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and yes, good, good comments, uh, Natasha, that many people do remember uh, their lifetime in Lemuria. Do you have any, do you feel any connection to those civilizations, Jeff, like Lemuria, Atlantis, or others? No, actually, um, I uh, want to study uh, Lemuria further. I just know the very basics of it, only what um, uh, Mahudi told me. And then that's as far as I actually know about that. So, but I'd like to know, know more about that. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe someday. Absolutely. And thank you, Jeff, for mentioning Clifford Mahudi because something happened. One, during the, during the retreat, we've done a lot of meditation and activations. And when we were working, with the energy of Uluru in Australia, with the indigenous tribes, and there's a lot of light beings who came and um, and other guardians that were working with us through the Uluru etheric uh, retreat there and the beautiful uh, crystal, the etheric crystal of the Pleiadians. At some point, I saw Clifford Mahudi coming to me, and he said. I come as a representative of the Zuni nation and I saw him entering into the chamber, the etheric chamber with the Pleiadians and my group was there too. And many of us in the group were there, but Clifford came yeah. that day during this very specific, he only came during the Uluru activation that we did during the retreat. And and this is absolutely incredible to see him. I was, I even mentioned it on the live stream. I said, you know, our dear friend Cliff Mahudi came and brought his wisdom, his ancestors with him, yeah, bringing this energy. So I couldn't wait to tell you, Jeff. Yeah, surprisingly, he did know a whole lot about that um, Lemurian everything. And yeah. I, I was just like gobsmacked. About, how do you know all that? But 
he was very knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable, but the the place, the time that Cliff Mahoney in his beautiful light body came was when we we're doing the activation with the intergalactic groups through Uluru and seeing him coming in uh, with us. And he made a point to tell me I wanted to be a part of this. My apology. Reset. So he made a point to know, and he wanted me to tell everybody who he was rep representing. And so to see him that way and coming into um, the etheric chamber with us and during the activation of Uluru in Australia, it was such an honor. And he brought a lot of joy to see, you know, we know an old friend. Uh, yeah. And it is exactly as we remember with the headband, his hair, and dressed, you know, the way he always does. You know, he makes you smile because you can f visualize oh, yeah. him. Yeah, yes. yeah Uluru is what, the belly button of the earth, right? Is that what it's uh, uh, coined? And there's supposed to be some uh, Palladian energy there? That's really interesting. Yes, Uluru is definitely the way you describe it in a way that it is said that it's apparently millions of years old and the Pleiadians brought in a, for the lack of a better word, a giant crystal or a gateway or a doorway. Uh, legend call it the magic box. Uh, Sometimes it is called that way. But Lu Uluru has a huge significance for the ascension timeline and the planetary process and the ascension process. Well, everybody, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for waiting. We have our guest. So let's start. Let's bring Rob here. Ah, the man of the hour. <laughs> the woman of the century and her beloved <laughs> partner. Thank you guys so much for having me on the show. Um, we got lots of good stuff to share, and I want to thank you for having me on, and it's an honor to have you on my conference. And we're going to make some other announcements. Uh, Bibby and I are uh, uh, really supporting each other in a lot of stuff, so we got a lot of good stuff to share here. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you for being here. I can see in a chat room already there are beautiful people here giving you a warm welcome, Rob. So, yes. So, I do have a little bit of your bio. So, I would love to properly introduce you to our audience, even though you are, there's no need for you to have any introduction. Just your presence speaks volume, right? <laughs> I'm just a postman delivering a message. <laughs> Well, that you are humble and yet powerful, just like Jeff here, my co-host and friend. So, you know, you're in great company here. So everybody, allow me to properly introduce this wonderful guest today, uh, Rob Potter. Rob is a world-renowned, real physical contactee of the Venusian and the Pleiadians. He shares his knowledge freely about travelers from these worlds. He has been having a casual physical encounters with our space family since he was 17. And I cannot wait to dive into that. Rob has given seminar all over the world, including Egypt, Japan, Australia, Bolivia, Peru, Canada, China, Europe, and of course, and of course, all across the United States. He has also appear on numerous radios and TV shows and has been interviews in countless magazines, newspaper articles for over 45 years. <coughs> Rob has just in a recent past on November 20th of 2019 met the Venusian moon base commander Aura Reigns. Rob can share how this natural meeting took place in a public place. He is happy to speak about the messages of love, peace that they told Rob to give the world, and that is needed more than ever. In this first ever exclusive official Venusian message and contact, Rob is allowed now to share with the public a simple message. And I know that you have done so much. You are the owner also of the Promise Reveal 
dot net or website the organizer of the incredible monshasta conference um the message you receive directly from from rob will give the venusian hierarchy of light message of hope love for people of the earth and we're going to post Rob's website right here called thepromiserevealed.net. Make sure that you connect. You have incredible amount of information, experiences. You go everywhere. Once again, welcome to the Infinite Star Connections today. Thank you so much for having me on. It is a pleasure to be here. And, uh, you know, folks, um, not many people... Um, do I, a lot of people talk about being, a, you know, working with extraterrestrials and all that information. And there's only a couple that I really uh, personally, uh, from my own experience, really can say I feel. And I think uh, a couple of them are for me personally, uh, a good friend of mine named Alex Collier, you probably know of him. Um, I've been working with him since uh, uh, probably the mid 2005 or six. And uh, he's been a good friend. Uh, James Gillen, I know, is a real physical face to face contactee, of course, and Vivian as well. And I also have um, my, uh, uh, my friend from Venus, we might talk about her today, Omnek Omnek. She was born on the fifth dimension. And then, of course, Raymond Keller who got to live on Venus, an absolutely adorable, heartfelt man. And there's a couple different things, you know. Vivian is also like my friend um, um, Luis Martens from South America. He, he's not involved in politics, but he brings the ships in. And they actually show up in what are called programmed contacts. At my conferences, they're generally around and they do show up for our sky watches this year we're going to have a woman named victoria Liljenquist, who predicted the ufos and she's in contact with ezekiel and the ship that lines up in front of venus called the new jerusalem and uh, the various commands are coming together now and um, i'm more comfortable talking about uh, star seeds in incarnation and many of you probably are so we can uh, dive deep into this stuff. I have a tendency to just bring out story after story after story because I have kind of a, I guess, not identical, but I'm, I I have a lot of memory. But from 47 years of face-to-face -face contact, I have a good amount of discernment. So I'll let you do some questions. I do have a little PowerPoint I can share. And I would actually like to share with you some of the recorded messages, um, uh, the first ever, voice recorded message um, of a Venusian other than Omnek Omnek, who came from the physical, uh, the fifth dimensional plane. Uh, a quick history on her is uh, she was living on the fifth dimension and uh, the masters asked her if she'd like to come to the earth. They said it'd be very hard her last lifetime on earth if she would take up this responsibility and lower her vibration on Venus and then come and live on the earth. She was about 147 years old in earth time terms on the fifth dimensional astral plane. Uh, she looked like a, a six or seven year old girl. And in her book that's available on, on my website is a trilogy. Go to book section and it says, from Venus I came, it talks about how what life was like on the fifth dimension. And then uh, she talks about Angels Don't Cry about her incredibly hard life and how she had to not tell people for a long time uh, who she was, all the inequity that she saw and the very heavy karma that was played out. And she's coming out smelling like a rose. And then uh, the last one is my message. And she uh, worked with a woman in Germany. If you go to my website, folks, under truth references, go back a couple posts that says Omnek Omnex. 58 messages and over 50 hours of recordings of over, some of them are 25 and, and 30, well, actually 70. Uh, Marina Popovich, the Russian astronaut, interviewed her. I met Marina Popovich. She came to Fred Bell's house and handed him a, a thing. So 
Um, there's so much reality coming forward now of our space family. Uh, and uh, Vivian's, um, her focus is healing and uh, the incredible activations. When you're with Vivian and she leads you through these things, the ships are there working on your light body. They're, I don't know if she has physical, but a lot of the people that I work with, the ships appear in the sky. And this gives you the physical experience to know that Vivian, Louis Martens, Victoria Logenquist, Omnek, uh, James Gilliland, and Louis Martens are real contactees. They show up, they move around, the lights are flashing, and they are working, developing new chakras in your body that we don't have, and a lot of good stuff. So I'm going to let you take some questions, and when you're ready, uh, we can play some voice-recorded messages and let people co uh, comment if they have questions. Um, if you want to take them from the audience, I'll let you do that. So I'm going to zip them up, and you ask some questions. I'll try to keep them short. <laughs> You are amazing. It's just right away the energy that you already created. We're all in. Aren't we, Jeff? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I can almost feel your wheels turning, Jeff. Do you have questions for Rob right now? Oh, I, I, I got some. I got some good questions for him. Well, then let's dive, my friend. Let's dive because we have a lot of good stuff here. Okay. Well, you know, Rob, I'm an, I'm an ET guy. Okay. And, um, I have interaction with uh, the Ponte or the, uh, the Zini, and I work very, very closely with the Umo. Uh, we have a, a group of people in Europe that we're a part of. <clears throat> so um, my question to you is, um, can anybody see these uh, Venusian ships? Be, you know, can just any average guy see it? Absolutely. I can share some photos of them. The very first famous contact in, of the Venusians um, to answer that anyone can see them. Now, certain people in their own belief structure may not see them. They generally are not interested in uh, the political aspect. And they told me to kind of step away from it. But m many people need to understand the situation on the earth. So I'll just say, yes, you can see them. And by the way, the UMO, do you have the UFO contact from UMO by Colonel Wendell Stevens? Yes, I have everything UMO related. I'm an authority on it. Excellent. I actually work with uh, Gemma Lozano from Spain. Excellent. Yeah, that, actually, yeah, that was where the oh. primary contacts, they landed there, actually. And Wendell Stevens talked about that. I was a good friend of Wendell Stevens. He wrote many UFO books. Mm -hmm. he, was a, um, he was a guy that was scrambled to witness the UFOs. And he was one of the greatest researchers and he wrote the famous uh, pictographic evidence of the UFO contact from the Pleiades. I'm not at home right now, but before he passed away, he, made, he gave me volume one, zero, zero, two. The first one went to, to uh, Billy Meyer, and I've got the actual number zero, zero, two. I was uh, getting communications with him. So, yes, you can absolutely see them. Um, they actually generally uh, are coming out more now with what's going on. There's liberation of the planet and quarantine breaking and the taking away of the dark system. So they're mm -hmm. going to be seen more and more around the world to prepare people for what's coming. Uh, can, uh, do they look like us? I mean, like the, um, the UMO, which I have seen one, uh, they're very, very similar to us. I mean, it's really, you have to know what you're looking for to, to pick one out, but do they look like us? Well, I'm going to share some photographs with you and I'm going to share with you a book my friend Raymond Keller that was given by a translated Venusian. So I'll take you through some of the images I have of our friends from Venus. And, um, and you're going to uh, enjoy these images. Uh, I forget. Let me see if I can figure out how to uh, share a screen on this bad guy. Have you enabled that for me? Vivian has to enable it. Okay. And is there a, a you should be at the very bottom where it says uh, share a screen? It doesn't say that yet. If she enables it, maybe I'll see it. Or it says gonna... present, maybe. Oh, saying... present. There okay. you go. Let me see if I can do that, and I'm going to share the screen, and we'll get right to it, and we'll show you some pictures of the Venusians. Now, I'm going to start off with um, 
my friend Valiant Thor, who I met in 2003. Am I sharing screen or? Nope, you have to click the one that's got the green. It says share. Okay, down here at the bottom. Okay, it says it says settings. Uh, it says cancel. It says share. I'm not sure. Have I been enabled yet? Yeah, you uh, should be. But you should uh, have a green box around uh, the screen. Uh, you want to share and click it. I see. Jeff, uh, how do you, how do we allow our guests to share? Okay. I think he's able to. He just has to click the. Uh, I, I see share screen. It says yeah. present. I click share. Yeah, screen. present. And mm -hmm. I said, um, uh, she says share screen. Yep. And uh, it and then not, I should see. It's not, it's not enabled. So if you like, while we're waiting for Vivian to do that, um, I'll share a little bit. Um, my personal history is I worked with Dr. Fred Bell when I was very young. I was 17 years old, or I met him at, at 16. In 1973, I was into pyramids. A girl said, I know the pyramid man. His great uncle invented the telephone and the automatic, uh, his great uncle invented the telephone. His father invented the automatic transmission, the alternator for Henry Ford extremely scientifically oriented. He uh, was studying the shockwave of the atomic bomb in Ann Arbor, Michigan with Dr. Leonard Katz and um, running through Henry Ford's hemp fields. He knew Bob Johnson of Johnson Motors and Bob McCulloch and Henry Ford wanted to create an ethanol car. So he uh, was drafted into the Air Force at 16, which was illegal, uh, but he was conscripted by the military. He went into the Air Force and was working on the top radar sets in the world uh, at the age of 17 after he received a PhD in physics. Now, the Cuban Missile Crisis, they're coming in. Just let me know when you can share a screen, Vivian. And um, so uh, he did a whistleblowing. They were burning up the DDS-332 UFO reports. He did that for two weeks, revved his motorcycle outside the watch commander's house. And they, who's this snotty kid? And he's the guy in charge of the entire, the most advanced radar set in the world at Point Reyes, California. He was witnessing during the Cuban Missile Crisis at the age of 20 in 1963, UFOs coming down at 15,000 miles an hour and going down. And those were the Venusians. They were primarily our guardian planet. And there is life there. And uh, they say it's too hot. No, uh, if you look at, they were looking at the electrical atmosphere. Our planet is even hotter. If you view it, it's 2000 degrees. There is life on Venus. They do live under domes. There is volcanoes and some stuff there. But so um, they ended up putting him in a mental institution for about a day. And he said, look, give me an honorable discharge. And then he went to NASA. He worked there for three years and they were messing up and, and lying um, on the or he went to the watch commander uh, or the quality control guy says the guys I'm working with inside the capsule they don't know what they're doing with electricity you're going to have a fire you're going to have problems and he kept going up the command they wouldn't do anything so he confronted Werner von Braun in the hallway and he said you're going to have a problem like this and he goes who is this young kid and he was fired the next day he filed suit with the ALCU and went to work for JPL and Rockwell on the Saturn engines in Long Beach where UFOs were coming down at the end of the day in the 60s, they would, he said that outside the hangar, a UFO would come down, send two little balls, and go around this way and around the other way. So sure enough, three guys burned at the Cape and they said, oh, please, uh, Mr. Bell, come back and take care of quality control. He said, no, forget it. He continued to work with Roswell and NASA. And then um, he, uh, because of his father's connections in the automotive industry, uh, the Japanese had uh, the most advanced oscilloscope in the world. So he got a United States exclusive on it. And he then uh, had a $25 million company that he was going around uh, to all the underground government bases and measuring all of their equipment. So um, I met him. And about that time in the late 70s, um, we started having contacts with the Pleiadians when I was physically beamed aboard a mothership in 1971 and a lot of stuff on my website now um he also made a portal too did that aid and all that uh some yeah let me see if i can share screen yet uh you share should be able to um, yeah it, it should i i look it up uh rob and it said that the share screen should be enabled if yeah, not share screen and uh let's see share i i can see the screens there okay there it is i clicked it okay okay we can you see it now? I'm uh, sharing. Yeah. There you go. Uh-oh, that's got a lot of windows there. 
Yeah. I don't know how to get rid of all of that, but um, so what I would recommend, Rob, go share screen again, which is a window. It can be an open, an open photo. Okay. I'm not. Too, will, I'm not too I'll used bring it. to uh, do uh, stream here, oh. folks. Uh, it's we'll wing it. Screen sharing works best on a good computer. That's good. So here we go, and I'm going to go uh, uh, select tap to preview. Uh, I guess a uh, tab to. Uh, I'll do a window. Yes, if your if your yeah. pictures are open on your. Um desktop screen you can only you can go by window and just click on the picture you want to share okay. and i'll bring it to the studio here first i'll share you my website and then um oh folks i want to recommend that vivian and i are going to be at the mount shasta summer conference here this is my website the promise revealed.net this is a pleiadian design technology there's a venusian ship so we've got some neat technology that dr bell did i'm going to be in glastonbury and Vivian's going to be there uh, at different times. But on August 10th, I'll be sharing the Gospel of Thomas. That's an amazing story. I don't have time to go into that. Uh, Hidden Secrets Cruise. Uh, Vivian and I will be there. Uh, and then we come. Here we are. The Summer Conference. If you're interested, you just click this button on my website. And you're going to see a tremendous amount of people here. And I'm going to um, show you. Um, you just go here. Uh, you want to look at this on the computer. We have a few volunteer positions left. Uh, everything you want to know, where to stay, vendors, venue locations, schedule's not up yet. But there's a dear beloved Vivian. And so I'm going to share with you. Um, we'll go back to um, uh, the main site here. And we got this woman is incredible. There's Omnik Omnik, the woman from Venus here. Raymond Keller, who lived on Venus for two and a half months. Ismail Perez. And we even have more speakers that aren't even listed here. Dan Winters appearing remotely. And we're waiting for the window to load. And oops, I got to go back to the visit site. For some reason, we're in the, the back end here. So uh, we, Vivian and I are going to be doing uh, something this November. I finally have a, a deal arranged with the hotel down in Cancun, Mexico. Uh, below there in a place called Tulum. We're going to go to the sacred sites and we're going to visit um, the uh, portals of Chichen Itza and, of course, the beautiful Tulum, Mexico, and that's going to be up on the site here. So I was going to show you uh, oh, the portal. Here we are. So I'm going to show you the pyramid systems here. And uh, this is, uh, I've actually, I don't know if your people have heard of uh, Sandra Michael and the EES scalar system. Uh, I've known her since 1978. So I'm going to share with you um, uh, some of these uh, technologies here. So this is uh, one of the Omnions. I'm going to take you to a link where you can see the, the, the uh, pyramid information. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I'm sorry about that. So, if you're not calling. <laughs> right. So here's all the information. So uh, you want to know about the portal and the pyramid systems technology. Um, I'm working with his daughter. This is a dedication. This is the advanced pyramid system, and I'm going to share with you now quickly the original manual, and I'll show you these pyramid systems. And these are nickel and gold-plated pyramids, and Sandra Michael is just purchasing an entire quad system of these pyramid systems. This is a Pleiadian ship, and this is Andromedan uh, technology. So if you go in here, there's a lot of information about pyramids, and I'm going to show you that. I just want to cut straight to the technology of the images. We used to wear pyramids on my head. There I am at 19. There's Fred Bell. Um, so um, th these are old pictures. I'm taking the original. I did edit this a bit. So this is how pyramids work on the endocrine glands and the chakras. And this is a, basically an education in understanding Thoughts and feelings as affected by genetic conditions, nature of environment, uh, liquids and foods digested, of course, uh, genetics of your parents, time of birth, and time of conception. This is a jewelry piece that I'm wearing over here that um, was given to Fred Bell, this design, in 1975 at Christmas. I came up and he said, this was a spaceship we were building. He was building in the desert, but um, never came to fruition. 
Uh, he was knocked off before that. But I want to show you these images of the pyramid system. This is a great thing. I'll let you educate yourself. But I'm going to show you how these energies work. This is a pyramid energy. In the middle, in the land of Egypt, in the heart and the border of, there lies an altar to the Lord. That is a pyramid. Pyramid, fire in the middle, which is a prana life force, pr producing the negative ion or the anu, the ultimate physical atom, the prana that you uh, work with. So these are the, the pyramid systems. We create seven of these. And when you sleep, your astral body comes out. So this creates a scalar wave technology. And we have an electrical floating ground Tesla coil. All of these things work. This grounds out elf waves and a lot of negative stuff. This is the base of a system. I have a different uh, system here. You can see the images. I don't want to make this too much of a commercial. But this is a portal. We create seven of these. This is a focal point. Uh, there's a time frequency, and uh, this is what it looks like. This is a guy named Buddha Maitreya. Um, he was a recognized toku. The Dalai Lama came and into Hawaii, where I built this system for him. And um, Dalai Lama came in, recognized him as a toku, and he was given a couple of monasteries in Tibet and actually uh, uh, turned it into uh, something else. So the gemstones, sound, light, and color is the new frequency uh, energy and the healing. So we create a circle of these pyramids. You can have seven or even up to as many as you want. So here we see a full seven system. You notice the different frequencies. This is looking from the top down on one of these systems. This lower uh, system here would be, this would say like a, this might be a lower frequency, like maybe a, um, a garnet. You get into the higher frequency where the, the waves are very even smaller. This might be a diamond. You know, you got a ruby, you got an emerald, you got the seven colors, you got a, um, you know, the amethyst. And so this is the frequencies. This is what it looks like. This is an artificial, this is a real stargate. This has a Tesla coil connected and it creates an incredible field of negative ions and a vortex energy of the violet flame. It's incredible. So that's the, the pyramid system there. So I'm going to stop share here. And if you have any other questions, uh, I just wanted to share that. And I'll, uh, I can share the Venusian images if you want to ask questions. Would you like wow. that? What do you thank think? Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank, thank you so much. I just feel the energy. There are already quite a few questions in the chat room for you. Very good. See? You're generating a lot. So I am being monitoring this whole time. Let me go back. Um, and there was the first question that caught my attention here was from Robert asking, are the masters Sanat Kumara and Master Sananda are both from Venus? They are one and the same. I spoke with Raymond about them. Sunat Kumara is... Uh, uh, like a, a divine aspect. He's been an ascended master for 25 million years. So Sunat Kumara um, um, took an embodiment um, on the earth as the ascended master Jesus. Now, even this ascended master of 25 million years um, was not, not God. There's a space Jesus, which would be Sananda, but in his more, um, the higher aspect of this ascended master was incarnating on various worlds as a great teacher. And uh, it was chosen this world alone. If you study the Urantia book, uh, we talk about God, the eternal God. And it's real simple. The eternal God is simply pure creative potential, infinite beyond all name and form and yet exists within all names and forms. So God is both imminent and transcendent to his creation. There are, you look now with James Webb, you could see billions and billions of galaxies, worlds without end. We're only looking on the physical. Imagine the multidimensional uh, universe. In the solar system, we have well over 60 planets. Most of them are invisible because they're existing on the fifth, sixth, seventh, higher dimensional planes. So now... Um, we, I've been asking the Venusians this, and this is part of uh, 
my studies and the and the queen of venus said rob you were learning line upon line precept upon precept i had trouble um i mean i always recognized jesus as an ascended master and a teacher and i, I couldn't understand they call him the living word of god and i was like well how can god be contained in one form and they said well god's contained in every form i said okay so what makes him so special so what they indicated to me is that there is a creator for every universe. We, in our earth-based thing, consider him Archangel Michael, a masculine. It's actually uh, a pure creative force of divine and masculine principle. And it goes like this. Uh, the symbol in the Urantia book and other things is a dot. That's the first beginning of the, the word is a dot on the manifestation. Now, the dot divides itself into two, a masculine and a feminine. So when you have two, there's number three. The one and then the two actually is at the same time the trinity. That would be called the father. The Holy Ghost would be the divine mother. And that aspect of all creation is the universal Christ. So Christ has been around a lot longer than the lifetime of the one we know as Jesus. There are many incarnations on myriad of the hundred millions of inhabited worlds and planets of development of uh, ascended masters uh, reflecting the eternal presence of God and in their teachings. Now, so I said, so what makes Christ so, because I was always like, you know, people think Jesus is, you know, the big deal. And I was like, Obviously, uh, there's many other teachers. Let's not get egoed out on earth that we think we're so special that we have the creator of the universe. And what they explained in, through, through what I understood in the Urantia book is that for three and a half years, because of the quarantine here, which Vivian knows about from the interlopers or intruders or the fallen beings who have used the earth as their last bastion of taking over the, the galaxy with the antimatter dark essence. Um, and, and they're now thwarted, but they chose this planet. And 16,000 years ago, when Christ was born, he was born as an ascended master, quite powerful. If you read the gospel of Thomas that I wrote an introduction to, he was raising people from the dead at the age of seven. So, um, I still said, I don't understand why he's so important. And they said, well, for three and a half years, the divine masculine feminine overshadowed him. So he could actually judge the fallen being Satan. Remember, he went up on the mountain and prayed and Satan said, hey, you got quite a name for yourself. You're quite powerful. Uh, worship me. I can give you anything. I own this world. And he did. And he did until 2012. Those covenants, those agreements unwound. So Christ, for three and a half years, was overshadowed by the creator's son. And um, he chose uh, to uh, accept, to prove the, the, uh, the cup that was given to him to, uh, to be crucified. He knew it was going to happen. And... Um, the security chief who I speak to uh, from Venus said that the master did not need our help, although, although we were standing by, but um, he proved his love for humanity by being crucified and he proved his divinity by his resurrection. So at that point, um, I understood that for three and a half years, the ascended master Jesus uh, in the Arantia book, it's made clear that the creator's son has to incarnate in various levels of his own manifestation on the various dimensions. He teaches each dimension. So he chose this lowly planet. So that's what makes uh, Christ uh, a special. And that's who Sanat Kumara is, um, is the ascended master. Phenomenal, Rob. Phenomenal. And you know, on a very personal note, a few years ago, quite a few years ago, uh, out of the blue, I was sitting at my desk at home 
preparing myself for a healing session and I can feel a presence at the corner of my eyes. So I turn around physically with my eyes open. I turn around and I see this beautiful being in a white robe coming. And I look at him and he said, I am Sanat Kumara. It is time for us to reconnect. And was like completely in awe to see the master walking towards me. And I could see him as clearly as I see you, Rob, and you, Jeff. So when you said that, it really went through my heart. It was very, very unique. So I want just to share that quickly. So thank you so much. I, for have, that. I have no doubt. Uh, a guy, um, uh, Dr. Frank Stranges, he appeared aboard the ship. Uh, he was one of the members. And um, the crew was all excited. And they, he goes, what's going on? Something's going to go, there's a, there's a special guest coming. And he was there with uh, the uh, other members. They have six Earth-based persons and six extraterrestrials aboard the ship where they discuss the world affairs and what's going on behind the scenes. And actually, Christ materialized. And Dr. Frank Strange just took a walk with him on the, on the shores of Lake Mead. So um, uh, also... Um, Victoria Logenquist, an amazing girl that you're going to meet, is there. And Omnek, Omnek, I don't want to blow people's minds, but um, if you listen to research, she was um, she knows Sunak Kumara personally. And um, so all of these things will be recognized soon. At this point, the people that are following you are very um, advanced in their knowledge and gnosis of the interdimensional planes and are the faithful who know uh, the reality of the extraterrestrials. Thank you. Thank you so much for your knowledge and experience, Rob. We have more question. If Can I read you the next one? Sure. Okay. So Ivana is asking, can you please explain more of what is coming in the actual situation in terms of how to eliminate the dark energies of dark ones? Well, I think um, everyone would agree. Um, this is what the Venusians are telling me. And I'm going to show, share an image of Valiant Thor. I've met all three of these beings in the physical flesh. They haven't aged. And therefore, I understand the process of ascension or what we would call translation. So this is Valiant Thor. So um, I got a cat up here uh, bumping it. So... Um, the Venusians clearly state that our, the future of the earth lies in our hands. And by they want us to follow the teachings of the master Jesus. When I said, I'm not comfortable, people are very triggered by Christ and religion now. Uh, and they spoke about Christ and they answered questions. And we can maybe play a little bit of the recording uh, for the people. And they can see the... Um, the Venusians actually giving me a message, the first ever official message to a humanity from the Venusian hierarchy of light, other than Omnek Omnek in her lifetime of service on the earth in the third dimension. But um, they said that um, we're responsible. We raise our frequency as Victor as a Vivian, Victoria, Raymond Keller and many others talk about we're responsible for our own consciousness and energy. Within us exists the mighty I am presence, the divine presence of God or the Christ consciousness exists within us as our true divine nature. And they said, have faith, Rob. And I said, do you need faith? And they said, Valiant Thor said, no. He said, we live in an exalted dimension. We know these beings. We, we, they live beyond the the physical limitations or the veil of uh, the material world. They live in a rarefied, augmented reality, which this planet will attain to at some point in the future. Some people think it's coming in, uh, quickly. I'm not so sure. The Venusians have indicated that we do have a ways to go. We're entering the fourth dimension now. The fifth dimension is the eternal realm of light where we will know that life doesn't exist. Many people know that and have faith, but raising our frequency, it basically comes down to the teachings of Christ and Christ threw away everything. And he said, love God with all your heart. Um, see God in everyone and everything. 
and do unto others as you would have done unto you. Those are the rules, and that's going to raise your frequency. If we focus on the negativity that is going on in the world, and a lot of people are very tuned in, I'm a transition point for them because I understand all of these mechanizations, the technologies, and the various extraterrestrials and the interactions on the political liberation of Earth. Vivian, Louis, Raymond, Omnek, Victoria, uh, these people coming to my conference are very adept at helping you raise your frequency. The masters invisibly in the ships work on your light body. And, um, you know, as you knock upon the door, these answers come. And so the Venusians have given me some techniques. Um, and there's two primary techniques. One is prayer. And prayer is asking as a little child in your heart and speaking to the mighty I am presence of God. And he knows and can hear you. So uh, that's one of the techniques. The other technique is called entering into the silence or listening. Meditation comes from the Latin medi and ter, which is to wait, to measure. And there's a science called the science of Kriya Yoga, which is a science of the still breath. I met a master who uh, taught me Kriya Yoga. His name is Babaji. He called me to his side in 1978 and taught me the science of the still breath and where the in-breath is offered to the out-breath. So as you enter into the silence, you can listen to God. So you pray, you ask God, and you be silent, absolutely silent, absolutely still, so still that you couldn't see me breathing. In fact, an entire breath cycle could take up to uh, two minutes. As you get more advanced and do this, uh, you can actually, your breath can go longer. So um, that's what's going on. Uh, did, did the, you were you able to see the picture of Valiant Thor or no? Yes. Oh, yeah. It's stayed there for a long time on the screen. I just wanted to bring you in focal point so we can see you better. Right. So um, that's their solution is raise your frequency through what you focus your attention on. Focus your attention on peace, love, and service. If you have negative thoughts, um, replace those negative thoughts. Don't worry about the world. They told me, they said, Rob, don't obsess on the darkness because I want the mechanizations. I want to know what they're doing. And they said, it is the light that pushes out the darkness. Don't worry about that. We have it well under control. And through Kim Gogan Ground Command and uh, the other information from other contactees, it appears that they have removed the higher dimensional dark force that's been working with the fallen traitors of humanity, the hybrids of the Anunnaki and the dark force, to limit them and remove them. And there are battles going on behind the scenes. They want us to make the choice on our own because if they were to land, we would worship them. We would be jealous of their technology. And they accuse to influence us behind the scenes. So that's how they work. You know, I, I love that you pinpoint something so essential that even my Octarian delegation speak of, and just in different terms. It's walking in the certainty of your light, how he always says, choose the light. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because even light and fear cannot coexist in the same the same field, the same space. So when you walk in the certainty of the light, it is so important and everywhere that we go. I mean, I just came back from Maui from a long retreat and I've seen all kinds of fluctuation, great beauty and other opposition. And the first day when we arrived, the original lodging point where we were, well, there were malevolent energy around us. And we have to really, my husband and I, really raise our light and stay in the power of our light and says, no, we're not here for this. We're here to do powerful work. We are of service to the light. We serve the creator and beyond. And we make the necessary changes. And that changed everything. But you're right. 
Like everything that you mentioned is stay in the light, choose the light, absolutely. And it's easier when we have um, the experiences. And when you spend time with Vivian and these other people who are very well connected, um, I'm going to announce, uh, if you get a ticket to my event, um, you're going to be invited to, before the event starts on the 21st in the evening, Vivian, the speakers, we're going to be having a sky watch with Victoria Logenquist, and she calls them in like that. She says, let's do it at twilight. I said, don't we want to do it at dark? She goes, it's no. He says, it's more impressive when they come in. Um, uh, at night, I'm going to share a picture with the Venusian moon base commander, Aura Reigns. And um, uh, am I sharing screen now or no? No, you have to click it. Okay, I'm going to do the present thing. Here we go. I'm going to present. I'm going to share a, uh, uh, let me see here. Not slides. Um, let me see. I'm going to share a window. Right, window. So it doesn't seem to offer that. Uh, let me share. Uh, uh, it's the same way as you did for the Venusian picture earlier. Right. For some reason, it's not showing. I was going to share the image. Let's just see. That's a video file. Uh, it's not giving me that option. Let me try one again. So let me uh, just do a video file. Uh, Venusian images. Here we go. So uh, show options. And we'll show custom files, and uh, I don't know here. So it looks like, um, you know, I'm still learning StreamYard, but um, I have this beautiful picture of the commander. They wear a red beret when they're in on an official mission on Earth. Oh. And um, I got that image there. The they last one. You... Rob? Yes, sir. Do they speak English? Oh, they speak many languages. They can, it's like um, they can download uh, information um, um, in, a, in, a, in a pretty interesting way. Um, they basically, the Venusians, for the most part, uh, manage their genetics. They are, they don't alter them or hybridize anything. Uh, the history of them as they were hybridized during what's called the Syrian shift 18 million years ago, the Pleiadians and the Aldebarans were going around and hybridizing humans with all kinds of insects and, and animals and stuff. But um, they respect, they very much are respecters of free will. And even if we make mistakes, God doesn't leave us here to make mistakes and fail. It's so that we can gather compassion and understanding. Mm -hmm. So um, the Venusians are um, very small in numbers on the physical plane. They're primarily fifth dimensional, but they come down to interact with us in the physical body. It's easier to come down than it is to go up. And um, they have chosen to... Um, but they still keep the flesh, right? They still keep the... Oh, I could touch her. I hugged her. I touched her hand. They don't have fingerprints. Right. They're not marked. So um, their their hands are baby smooth and soft. Their hair is incredibly resilient. The woman I met, the commander, which I'm trying to share her, her image with you. Uh, let me see if I can uh, uh, share screen here what it says. I want to... Um, okay. Don't share that. Tips again. I'm going to share a screen, and I'm going to do uh, a window. There it is. Okay. So now I'm going to share a picture of Commander Reigns. That is Raymond Keller. You see, she's wearing a red beret. Her hair is brown. She has a dual tan. She's a six-dimensional moon base commander, and she's in official capacity wearing a red beret. She worked with um, the American, French, and Caribbean Revolution. She was giving information to, to Benjamin Franklin. I asked her, I said, did you? I said, did you give him the discovery of electricity? And she coyly said, well, I may have given him certain information, 
that led to the disco discovery of electricity. I said, what about Thomas Jefferson? Did you know you, that you were an extraterrestrial? And she said, the, uh, she said, the tall intellectual Virginian suspected I may have been from another realm. She was also in France as one of Lethnesseurs, one of the nine muses to the Masonic Lodge. Don't be triggered, folks, because the Masonic Lodge, just like the teachings of Christ, were pure. The bad guys uh, overtook the Masonic Lodge in the late 1800s, as well as the Illuminati. Many people have heard of Jason Shirka and Ray and the Light System. That is the new Mason, that is the new Illuminati, special incarnated beings that are learning, adapts, and working behind the scenes to affect the information. Now, the guy that took this camera, his name Alon, he is the security chief of the Venusians. He is 2,400 years old. And um, so um, he uh, was born under Darius the Great in Persia. And I was suspecting, I said, you were around with Christ. You were on his security force. And he said, yes, I was. He goes, he never needed our help. And as I said, he said um, uh, there, and I said, he says, I was also present at his birth with two Persian friends of his. So the guy that held the camera, and I could actually play that interview if you guys want for a little bit. It's 28 minutes. We'll give you a short little introduction. Um, if you'd like, would you like me to do that? Well, okay. before that, I have a question. You got my curiosity here, Rob, so just bear with me. It's very simple. Why a red beret? A beret. Oh, that's a French word. Why a red one? I think it goes back to Vive la France. Vive la France, indeed, bien sûr. <laughs> I think, you know, you guys are into the berets, and during the French Revolution, you probably even had berets. So... Um, most people, if you think hard, think of an artist because they influence, they're communicating with scientists, financials, military, technology, all aspects of life, including musicians and art artists, are meeting them privately. If they reveal themselves, that person generally keeps their mouth shut. Mm -hmm. There's a, an artist named Prince, and he wrote a song about his meeting with a beautiful Venetian woman. Mm -hmm. yep. She wore a raspberry oh, yeah. beret, and if it was warm, she wouldn't wear much more. She wore a raspberry beret, the kind you find in a secondhand store. She came in through the outdoor, outdoor. So um, he ended up becoming lovers with this woman, and he changed his name. The symbol. The Venusian symbol, yep. which is actually a, in astrology. It's a circle with a little cross, mm -hmm. but the actual Venusian symbol is actually the Mars symbol with a cross, masculine and feminine. So um, I don't know extent, and I haven't even asked him this question, but I know for a fact, because he changed his name to a symbol, that he had a contact with the Venusian. And this is how they influence us, uh, secretly, privately, behind the scenes. And... Um, uh, that's good stuff. Hey, I got another question. Is uh, the Val's craft still off the coast of Mexico? Val's craft ranges and moves around, and it's called uh, Victor One. Oh, Victor One, yeah. And each of the craft, there's probably 24 around the planet, has two other craft hovering in the astral nearby so mm -hmm. they can react quicker to any material. Uh, plan or plot going on. They monitor all thoughts within 10 miles and every person that knows the location of those craft and capable of launching any type of uh, thing, they kept under 100% uh, percent surveillance of their thoughts and every activity and everything they do. So there's no way any Venusian is ever going to get caught. They're the masters of this solar system. They are our guardian, uh, sister, intelligent world. Um, my friend Raymond Keller got to live there for two and a half months in 2012. Yes, um, Raymond Keller was a guest on the podcast for like, what, two months ago? It was amazing. Amazing. Oh, yeah, so, tremendous guy. 
Yeah, we know. And then we're going to see yeah. each other again in Mount Shasta for the amazing conference there. Yes, I cannot wait. Well, there's another question for you from Red Rose. Sure. Um, she said, I have a question for you, Rob. I always hear about the need to raise our frequency in order to connect with intergalactic intelligence or ET's intelligence. So what about the times where someone has been taking in lucid dreaming or in person for hybrid reproductions? Um, so here's the deal on that. So they explained to me that because of the situation here, many, many different star systems have sent their own volunteers. In the Urantia book, they're called the Reserve Corps of Volunteers that would incarnate to overturn the situation on the Earth. Many of the star seeds are, uh, in Victoria's case, in your case, and probably other people's case, there are commanders of, of uh, and have your own ship, or your, your own relationship. Um, but they're, you're incarnated. You have an agreement with them that they can take you up with your earthly life and the problems that you're going through, through your reaction, you to the world's materialistic situation, you, you are learning and your decisions and what you understand generates into the web of life and the field and raises the frequency of those around you because you, you see through the lies. Many of us knew that the, never even considered taking a vaccination. We knew all of that negativity. So um, uh, these type of things is what's going on. So they will come down in certain cases in a positive sense and um, uh, uh, take your DNA, sometimes for their own per personal reasons of monitoring uh, and for their own genetic storing. But an abduction may be to speak to you and to do things like, uh, I know a guy last year came to the conference, David, he was taken up. He's from the Aldebaran system and he gave evidence against the earth in 2017 with 500 people of earth. Many forgot their experience and didn't know, but they gave evidence of what was going on on the earth. So this garnered, uh, he said there were 10,000 representatives from 5,000 worlds. Um, there and reacting, there were 500 people that that they tapped into their brain and their big screens and everyone was watching when they saw what was going on here. They go, they can't do that. And some wanted to leave us alone and let us destroy ourselves. And as the evidence came forward, the councils agreed to become involved in the multi-galactic federation liberation of planet Earth. And so this lowly planet at the very edge of the Milky Way, which became the last stronghold of the fallen dark force that has been parasiting on humanity through the transhumanist black essence agenda of total domination of control is being thwarted now. Just as they were about to rule, rule, rule this world, it's been taken from them. Alex Collier says uh, the Andromedans have come from the future where they saw tyranny taking place and they're correcting the timelines. So that's taking place. So we can't see it, but I can tell you all, hold on just a little while longer. We're about to get a lot of, uh, a lot of truth coming in. So um, I'll just say the night classes are real and Valiant Thor, I've been on them. Um, you go into a night class and, um, um, a night class is you go aboard the ship in the fifth dimension. And I've been had memories several, like maybe five or six times. I had the one with the lawn and the, the uh, commander reigns a couple months ago. And I'm only allowed to remember a little bit at the end. I've woken up and I know that I have an interaction um, with them. So rest assured your own star, family may be taking you up for night classes and lucid dreaming. This is generally blocked to you for your own safety. 
but these memories will be restored. You will have memory allowances. As these solar flares, maximum minimums, take place, they're going to be blocking and releasing the veils. I'll tell you something else that you can read on my website, which is very important for you to know. People talk about global warming, and a lot of people think it's fake. It's actually solar warming. And there are several people, oh, you're being negative, and there are some drastic changes. Now, Alex Collier said, oh, I announced solar warming 10 years ago. And I go, really? The Venusians told Dr. Frank to tell a physicist to look in the area of space in 1972, 50 years ago. And this scientist predicted that the solar system would heat up. Uh, Sheldon Nidell talked about a photon belt. Corey Good talked about this energetic particle. And we're going through it right now. So here's the, the deal, folks. In space, it's normally absolute zero between the Earth and the moon. Once you get beyond our atmosphere, it's normally zero degrees. It's taking us 120 years. We're going through a hydrogen cloud. This hydrogen cloud has created a temperature area between the planets all the way out to Pluto in space is now 10,000 degrees. That energetic particle is transforming our consciousness. This is an area of space that's accelerating our DNA, as Vivian talks about, our transformation. And it's going to um, uh, allow for an evolutionary jump, which is quite slow in terms of lifespan. But it's going to be opening up. And for many people who are tuned to these frequencies, who are from the other dimensions and stuff, may be having their gifts come sooner. Again, Vivian, Victoria, Raymond. Of course, Omnek was born with it. She maintains perfect memory. Um, and other uh, star seeds have this. Uh, so this frequency upliftment, now get this. We're having a natural cycle. There are sun flares that take place every 11 years. Well, we're on a maha, maha, maha cycle of maybe 1,000 or every 10,000 or even 12,000 years right now where the solar flares are getting more intense. Mm -hmm. So now these solar flares are supercharging, getting turbocharged by the area of space. So I want to say something first. What I'm going to tell you is inevitable. It's natural. They're not going to stop it completely. They've been shielding it, but at a certain point, they have to let it down and let nature take its course. But as these solar flares increase, they're going to cause some, uh, and you can read this on my website, if you go back more questions and answers from the Venusians, the, the Alon explains very clearly that uh, these flares are going to interact with the Earth's geomagnetic uh, fields on levels we have don't even begin to understand. And they're going to interfere with communications. And otherwise, satellites are going to start stop malfunctioning. And they're going to um, uh, start coming down. We're going to lose some communication. And there's going to be natural uh, disruptions in our electrical grid systems. This is due to the solar magnetic flares, depending on if the Earth is facing when the mass of that flare hits. There may be... Uh, even EMP-like conditions that I'm not going to say it. They didn't mention it, but I speculated to them. They didn't mention it, but um, there could be planes and stuff like that maybe having natural uh, problems there. This is nothing that we can't handle, ladies and gentlemen. So I don't want you to go into fear and doom and gloom. This is a natural process of order that is going to help people make the transition. People want to hold on to the media and what they're told, the lies, the programming. And, um, you know, this programming from religions, we're going to have to hold on to the truth of the avatar of Christ, Krishna, Muhammad, Buddha. Uh, many of the great world teachers have all taught the same message of love and the reality of the omniverse. And the lowly priests have corrupted and tried to divide the people in the ego that they're the ones to interpret the teachings 
and to divide you against each other. We are all human humans and we need to work together. The other thing that they told me, and I'm going to make this prophecy now. So Greg Braden supports that message. Uh, I've talked to physicists at NASA clandestinely behind the scenes. They know that outer space is 10,000 degrees. Um, I've also, uh, Greg Braden, Alex Collier, Dr. Frank Stranges, and now the Venusians themselves have told me what's going on. So we can look for natural weather changes coming as these solar flares take place. This is all part of the realignment of the etheric grid of the planet. The portals are shifting and new, um, new vortexes are going to be reclaimed and new ones will be reestablished along the lines of this transformation. The second thing, and there's, I got one more number three. The second thing that's going to take place is 2029. There is going to be an asteroid come between the Earth and the moon. They've done a movie about it. They did the thing with Bruce Willis blowing up. And then they just did a movie called Moonfall with all the AI. Forget all of that. It's a natural occurrence. We will survive it. They may bump it a little bit so it doesn't isn't <laughs> damaging to us. But it's going to cause severe weather changes, huge tidal surges, and we're going to have uh, some earth changes, earthquakes. And I can tell you, I believe from my understanding, they did not say this, but I'm speculating based on Billy Myers' contact when I was 17, Wendell Stevens was sending me um, the mimeograph notes of Billy Meyer when he got them. So I'm 17. I'm reading Billy Meyer's contact notes before people even knew he had 250 contacts. And Billy Meyer said they'll never go to Los Angeles because he witnessed an earthquake that dropped the Los Angeles basin into the, you know, right off the coast of California and Los Angeles, north there, San Andreas Fault. It goes in the ocean. It's hanging by a thread. So it's going to drop, cause a tsunami, <laughs> Um, and many other places in the world, again, nothing we can't handle. But I believe, my faith is that our galactic neighbors want to get the, the military and the people on board uh, to prepare us for this change. And they're going to warn us that we can make, we need to make a move to safe areas. Maybe like, you know, like Noah and the flood, those who choose to listen to. But... Uh, Billy Meyer said two years later, something he said, they'll try to rebuild Los Angeles. And he said two years later, something will happen. So here's a quote from Alon. Alon says um, it will cause some earth changes. They said there's something coming. To, it's going to cause the weather changes. It's going to cause interruptions of geomagnetics and um, stuff like that. And then I, uh, they said followed by a similar event two years later. Flashback to 1978, I'm reading Billy Meyer's notes from Wendell Stevens, hand-delivered to Fred Bell, and um, it says a similar event will occur two years later. So this seems to be a prophecy that's, no matter the timeline, um, is part of what the Earth has to go through. So again, let us not fall into negativity, and let us not um, um, run into fear. Uh, they said, Rob, I asked them about Nibiru. And they said, Nibiru is real. It's a very a long elliptical orbit. We know it is planet X. Um, it was pushed out of the Sirius system. Uh, and it's on a very long elliptical orbit. And most of the planets go around like this. It comes north and south. And it actually comes in from the south. And when it comes... It caused geomagnetic problems throughout the entire solar system. They said it has a 3,600-year um, orbit. And uh, the Palladians called it the destroyer comet. They said it was 3,600 years, too, uh, in Billy Meyer's notes, for those of you who are well-read enough. So um, she said it's 1,500 years away. And they said, Rob, much and I asked them about the magnetic shift. They said, don't worry about that. We're more concerned about what humans do to each other than any natural thing. So this is the emphasis on the spiritual nature and for us to see each other and to work together. We're going to have to be forced to work together. 
when our communication electronic systems go down, we need to be up to speed in our galactic IQ to work together in our local communities. So this is the, these are the cities of light that we need to uh, come together. And they're hopefully people, uh, they said uh, the next two years, they told me this last year. So the next two years, 23 and 24 are wait and see. This is up to humanity and how we react to the coming revelations. Apocalypse means revelation. It doesn't mean destruction. It means you're going to be shocked about the truth of what's going on and that your the criminals in your government are all aligned to uh, sell you out to uh, reptilians where they'll be made lords of the world. It's not going to happen. So, um, and the final thing they told me, and this is the good news, they said, um, when the solar event occurs, well, they didn't say that, actually. I should change that. They said, um, many of the chosen, and the chosen will choose themselves by their faith in God, by their knowledge of the Christ, and by their vibration, will be taken to planets, space platforms, moons, and planetoids, or artificial uh, moons. So you're going to be taken off the planet during the final well, let's call it the tribulation period where the earth goes through dramatic changes and you will be trained. Your memories will be restored. You may even have your age reversed. Or if you die, you will be on board the ship and you will come back down to aid the earth. Very possibly during the apocalypse of the earth changes to lead people into preparation. So. That's a long talk, and I'm going to shut my little trap and let you guys ask some questions. Do you think yeah. the universe is electric? Pardon? Do you think that the universe is electric? It's electromagnetic. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, if you read the questions and answers to the Venusians, my, my website's kind of like a spark of lightning way off. Mm -hmm. But you get into it, and you start reading their questions and answers and realize the level of contact that they've granted me. I'm just a postman delivering a message. I'm nothing special. Believe me, I'm, when it comes to the, the, the metaphysical and the spiritual presence and the connection, again, I'm going to say Vivian, Raymond, Omnek, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Raymond, Omnek, Vivian, and uh, uh, Victoria, Lodjenquist. Okay are beyond me. Louis Martens is beyond me, but um, I have a, a very good memory so I can explain a lot of these things that can help you understand. Yes. And what I like is the way you're bringing in a positive light. So, and anything else to remember everyone, truly we're serious about this. Stay in your light, serve the light, connect to source get to know this divinity within you and avoid as much as you can giving in into fear doubt giving out your power going into lower control what we call contractual primal energies stay in your light and that's what you've been repeating all along and the doctrines are like yes 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 absolutely um we're about to wrap up but there's a beautiful question and it's very much in sync what you just share Rob, and I think there might be a shorter um, answer to that. Stacy is asking, what can you tell us about the sun looking wider and brighter? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, behind the scenes, the galactics, um, and you can follow Kim Gogan. Many people don't believe she's in charge of the quantum system, but I can tell you from my experience, the Venusians have refused to comment on that because uh, they don't want... Uh, uh, to be involved in politics or finance. But um, from my intuition, I know that she's in charge because of the way she describes uh, how she's running operations. She has enforcers that are removing the very advanced technology that was coming from the tall grays, the Nubu, and the um, Anunnaki, the fallen beings, and 
There's even the Chimera. There's crazy stuff. And there's alliances of these parasites that have been um, just involved in greed and power. It's hard for us to imagine mass murdering and, and selling humans, but we do it. We're, we're you know, we have slaves. We do all this stuff. There's, we're, it's earth humans influenced by negative outside forces for sure um, manipulating us, but we've done a lot of mass murder. And so what I say is look at the dark, understand it, but don't focus on the television. That's all they're doing is trying to keep your vibration down because when we raise our frequency, those lower dark forces have no power and the earth has failed in its third dimension. So um, I'm going to say, um, what, what was the question? I'm going to get back to the focus of that real quick. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, of course. The question from Stacy was, why does the, the sun look wider and brighter? Right, because the false reality, we're moving into crystalline time. There have been a series of agreements of in terms of the multidimensional universe and how it's administrated by the galactics. We, they had to allow the takeover of this planet because the earth invited them. And 16,000 years ago, the earth was involved in a series of nasty wars using very high technology. The wars had continued from Atlantis when the interlopers came in, as, as mentioned in the Emerald Tablets, where they invade, take out, push humans out of their bodies, and they start promoting their, um, you know, it's not all reptilians are negative, but a, a hostile agenda. So humanity has been lied to. We don't know our true history. But as we move into the fourth dimension, the Akashic records will be revealed, and anyone can go to a library and see the history of the earth. They'll be able to see the crucifixion of Christ. They'll know, you know, who killed who. And all this will be understood that mankind has been misled. And as we grow into our cooperation and our true I am presence. So the answer is the, the technology that was fed through a portal here into crystals here in the sacred sites that the bad guys took over. They were influencing your consciousness into the hypothalamus. That's your emotional brain mind. Never make a decision when you're angry. Take a pause. Valiant Thor said, take a cortic thalamic pause. Don't react emotionally. Pause. Mm -hmm. Listen to your I am presence. Cooler heads will reveal. Don't react and realize that the technology, we're seeing more cloud ships. We're seeing rainbows in the sky. And... Um, the, I've been told that one of the major bases of the antimatter demons uh, that was creating the chemtrails has been taken down. I think that's almost over. And that is, uh, of course, the poisoning of humanity like we spray on the bugs in our crop fields have been spraying upon humanity to destroy our genetic heritage. And my website, the Pleiadians and Andromedans, have a lot of technology that can overcome that. They're going to be able to remove the vaccine damage that's been done at some point. So we have a very bright future. And um, I just want to thank you guys for listening to me. I try to keep my answers short, but I, it's just been great to, to share it all. And Wonderful. Yep. Hope to see you all in Mount Shasta and uh, moving forward with it. And, and keep following Vivian. Maybe join us on the cruise uh, or uh, in the uh, Tulum next uh, winter. I'm working on creating a program. We're leaving, uh, arriving down there on the 15th for about um, uh, seven days. And we're going to go to Chichen Itza, Tulum, Copa, uh, Mall, Ek, 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 Ekbalam, and some other locations. We're going to do some sky watches with Louis. And it's going to be a good time of the weather down there. And we're going to and see, that's where Christ went. Actually, I'll, I'll give you one last little hint here. Christ was, um, he was known by various names. And they have a picture, they have him. He was a white guy. And they had a baptismal pool that he had created. And they, they built the Holy of Holies. And he said, 
he came down to Chichen Itza and he said, uh, he said, I'm a shepherd. I've come to tend the rest of my flock. Bring me your sick, your lame. I will heal them. And he said, stop sacrificing people. So he turned everything around. He was known as Quetzalcoatl. Mm -hmm. And he was known as Kukulkan. In the Americas, he was known as, as Tacoma. So he was maintaining his teachings around the earth um, at that time in his form to uh, reestablish the, the truth and the light. So uh, thank you so much. Rob, this is wonderful. Yes, absolutely incredible. And I have shown so many times your, your your website. People will connect with you. Come see us at the Manchester Summer Conference, the date June 22nd to the 25th, I remember correctly. That's correct. Yeah, see. If you're there on the 21st, we're going to be announcing a Skywatch, a private one, um, with Vivian. And she's going to say, come now. And I'm going, to do, I'm going to do a live stream with her, and she's going to do it from Sedona. And uh, uh, that's Ezekiel's ship and the New Jerusalem. Uh, you mean probably mean Victoria, but it's going to be amazing. Absolutely. Yes. But thank you for saying my name. And it's, I just observing how much many of the intergalactics and the Venusian, the high. Pleiadians, my delegations, we all speak of very similar knowledge. I love the way that we have different avenues to talk about, stay in your light. We call it energetic reset, divine neutrality. Uh, take the time to disengage, live in parallel to all this, you know, 3D confusing times. So there's so many beautiful reinforcement in the teachings and i love the way you brought it up unique to you everybody thank you for being here the one and only rob potter uh, cruise the hidden secret revealed april 7 to the 14 manchester summer conference the one and only june 22nd to the 25th you want to come for summer solstice on the 21st you come join us everything is on the website please join us also in two weeks sunday march 26 we're returning to our normal time 11 a.m pacific daylight time which is going to be two o'clock easter daylight time join us on the 26th of march I want to say November because you talk about your event there. So my mind is already there. But yeah, in two weeks, we'll see you there. Rob, I cannot wait to see you uh, in April very soon. It's going to be awesome. Jeff, my friend, as always, so grateful for you. Thank you for holding the space. And everyone who tune in from all over the world, all the way to Australia today. We really honor you. South Africa, Germany, Australia. We have people from all over. We love you. We'll see you in two weeks, 11 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Stay in your light, everyone. No fear. Namaste. Au revoir, mon amis. Voilà.